tennis is on its annual foreign trip these days, a term abroad, as it were. While the sports swing through Asia might displace it from the traditional comfort zones of the US, Australia, and Europe, this stretch is critical. Like a cultural exchange, it fosters growth, opens minds, and expands horizons. Like most businesses these days, tennis tries to figure out how to transition to the global economy. The good news, the sport is way ahead of the game. Currently, there are nine tournaments in Asia, a healthy chunk of the schedule, and they're important enough to attract the best players. So a whole new cohort of fans can observe the grace of Federer and the grit of Nadal. But it's more than that. It's nuanced, too. In person and on TV, new fans can appreciate doubles, see women and men as equals, giggle at shots that clip the tape and at those close Hawkeye calls. They also can grasp the suspense of five all in the third. Billie Jean King often says you have to see it to be it. With this new exposure, we can expect Asia to start minting more pros. In fact, the continent already has. There's been a Chinese Grand Slam singles champ and a Japanese player embedded for years at the top of the ATP Tour. And there's more to come. The top junior in the world right now? It's Wu Yibing of China, fresh from winning the boys' title at the US Open which is remarkable given that no Chinese male player is currently in the ATP's top 200. Where do we go from here? Who knows? But it's important to celebrate how well this sport travels. In tennis, like the court itself, the world truly is flat.